Oh. Well, hello there. Welcome back to Tyrone Steel Garage. Join me by the fire while I tell you a story. We just had Snowmageddon here in Tennessee, so I'm dressed up a little bit more than I normally would be. But I brought you here today to talk about my newest project. So what we have here before me is a 2JZ. So I figure I'll start off telling you about why I have this engine. You see, about a year ago, one of my really good friends called me up and he said, hey man, I got this old 88 Merc and uh, I really love the car, but I don't have time for it anymore and I don't want to deal with selling it to some idiot. Uh, I think you should just come get it. So, you know, I drove up there, picked up the car, hung out with my buddy for a few days and brought it back. And before I even got the car, I figured, you know, he said that it needed a lot of work and it was old and blah, blah, blah. But I knew he had already done some stuff to it and I may have gotten into some cold light calorie Mick Ultras or something and I decided I needed to buy an engine before I even got the car. So <laughs> I ordered a 2JZ off the old eBay and uh, it showed up before the car even did. So then I go out and get the car and uh, well, not only did it run good, it drove great. So didn't really need this engine. Brought it home and I'm sure... All you all have watched the videos on my channel about the car. Um, if you haven't, go back and check them out. But I got the car, and my buddy had already gotten some cool uh, uh, AMG wheels from the early 2000s for it. Um, he'd already converted the K-Jet M103 engine to Mega Squirt, and he'd already done a lot of cool stuff to it. But basically, the suspension was worn out, the brakes were worn out. Um, so I went ahead and lowered the car with HR Springs, rebuilt the entire suspension, rebuilt all the rubber, all the dampeners and the drive shafts, um, flex discs, diff bushings, um, all the brakes, everything underneath the car was brand new, with the exception of the wheel bearings, because I was an idiot, and for some reason I didn't change those. And then the front wheel bearings went out after driving it for a month, I fixed those, and now, now the rear wheel bearings are starting to go. And after driving it daily for a year, it, uh, you know, the motor's starting to get tired. It's got a quarter million miles on it. Um, the rear wheel bearings are getting pretty bad. Um, but to be honest with you, that's not the reason I'm doing this, because I don't really think you can kill that M103. Um, you know, my buddy Kyle said they eat head gaskets from time to time, but that motor, it really doesn't eat their, or leak that much oil and I honestly think it'll go forever if it's serviced right. Um, but I can't leave well enough alone. Um, and I love that car. I love driving it every day. I'd rather drive that thing than anything new. Call me old-fashioned. But I love cars. So I've always wanted to build a 2J car. So I went ahead and got this bad boy. And I'm going to go ahead and explain to you why I chose this platform and uh, let's go ahead and turn the lights on so you can actually see me talking. The joke's over. All right, so always wanted to build one of these cars. You know, I was I graduated high school the year that uh, the original Fast and Furious came out, and I hated those cars back then. But I'd be lying if I didn't think that Supra was cool. And I just these motors are iconic, so I kind of always wanted to build one. And they're like the Japanese LS, you know, like they're, the aftermarket support forms incredible. I mean, the motors are insanely built. So there's basically three different versions of this motor. I have the newest version, um, which is called a 2JZ GE VVTi. These came, this particular one came out of a 2002 IS300. And uh, really the reason I went with it is because it's the cheapest version. Now, the one that you see, you know, the Supras, the, the cars that are making, you know, a thousand horsepower, those guys are running what's called a 2JZ GTE uh, VVTi motor. And what that basically means is that's the high performance turbo version of the motor. It came with oil squirters. It had an eight and a half to one compression. It had a thick head gasket in it, and it was built from the factory to be a turbo motor. Those motors are going for like eight thousand dollars used now, so they're just not cost effective to build anymore. 
The earliest version of the 2J was called a 2JZ GE. Now those motors didn't have variable valve timing and they had a regular distributor on the side of them. What was cool about those motors is they, they had essentially the same bottom end as the later turbo motor. Um, so what a lot of people like to do is buy the motor that I have, take the head off of it and put it on that old GE motor. Um, and this motor, the big, the really the only difference between my motor and a GTE turbo super motor is it has different pistons, different rods, and it has a thinner head gasket. Now, when Toyota built the IS300, they wanted to use the same proven engine they had been running, but they didn't want to turbo it. So they, to make up for that power, they put higher compression pistons in it and they put a higher compression head gasket in it, a thinner head gasket. Um, other than that, the block is the same, the crank is the same. This doesn't have oil squirters, but a lot of people that build the turbo motors delete the oil squirters anyway. Um, so really, it doesn't matter which version of the engine you get. If you get it out of a junkyard, you can build it. Now, these motors, the VVTi that I have, the GE VVTi, the rods are super thin compared to the turbo motors, and they're really... Uh, the accepted horsepower number that they can handle is about 450 horsepower. Now my goal with this engine is not to go crazy. I just want to, I want about 400 horsepower, 350 to 400 horsepower. I want reliable. So I'm going to run a Toyota Supra Aristo ECU. I got one off eBay for like 300 bucks. I'm going to convert this to a turbo. I'm going to pull the head off of it. I'm going to change the valve guides. I'm, or the valve seals, I'm going to put a thicker head gasket on, I'm going to put the super head gasket on it to, to bump the compression down to about 9.2 to 1. Um, I'm going to replace everything else, the accessory drive, the timing belt, the oil pump, the water pump. I got to drill and tap the oil pan so I have a feed to drain oil into the turbo, from the turbo. I went ahead and I picked up a Supra GTE Aristo upper intake and a throttle body. And I also went ahead and got a Toyota Supra Aristo um, automatic four-speed with overdrive. It's got the J3 stamp on it, which means that this A340 will do about 500 horsepower. So there it is. That's the drivetrain for the Merc. Um, I've already got it initially torn down. And really, the only thing I'm going to be using that I've taken off the motor so far, I'll probably use the starter. I'm gonna use the lower intake, um, the lower G intake. I may use the uh, stock fuel rail. I've already ordered some um, Oside Tiger top feed um, conversion injectors. These are 330 cc injectors. I'm gonna bump up to 440 cc to support the turbo. I'm gonna completely gut the stock harness and rewire and build my own harness. Uh, I may test the alternator and see if it still works, um, but if it doesn't, I'll just get a new alternator and um, try not to break things. But really, I already tore the valve covers off this motor and it looks like, I want to say the guy I bought this from, he either told me it had 20,000 miles on it or that it was under 50,000 miles and of course, you know, can't trust anybody. So So who knows? But I will say that when I took the valve covers off this thing, there's not even any oil staining on it. I mean, it looks brand new inside. So really, the next step is, in this video, I'm gonna keep tearing it down. I'm gonna pull the uh, front accessory drive off, the water pump off, take the valve covers off, the timing covers, and um, get the head off the motor. And then I'm gonna just clean up and organize so that when all the parts I've ordered come in, I can start building the motor. Uh, all I'm really going to do is paint the block. I'll probably paint the valve covers. But I'm not going crazy here. I kind of like the patina look of the Merc. And I want to have a brand new engine inside the car, you know. Probably power wash the transmission. What's really cool about this is this Toyota, only the Supra and the Aristos use these flex discs. And the Merc uses the exact same flex disc. So... To put this in the car is unbelievably simple. Um, if you want to be really cheap about it, since the Toyota and the Merc basically have the same dimension engine, the M103 is a straight six as well. You can actually just bolt this into the Merc by drilling two new holes and notching the transmission mount. Um, there is a guy on eBay that sells the conversion mounts for a couple hundred bucks, but this almost was designed to go into that Mercedes. It fits so well. And the only thing you really got to do is shorten the drive shaft about two inches 
and you have to fuel it, cool it, and uh, build build a new exhaust, obviously. But as far as swaps goes, this is super easy. And for those new to the channel, if you haven't subscribed, please do so. I appreciate it. And uh, here's the car we're talking about, in case you're wondering that too. That's the Merc, also known as the Panzer. Love it. So all right, let's go ahead and start tearing this motor down and get to it, eh? Well, I think I got the timing cover just kind of sitting on here right now. Well, no, it looks like I did have it loose. Let me grab some tools here. Now, I don't have this motor set at top dead center, so before I start doing anything crazy, I'm just going to take the I'm going to take the valve covers off. Timing cover, simple stuff. And then I'm going to have to set the motor to top dead center. Now, these motors are kind of funny in that they have a uh a uh, top dead center zero degree timing mark and then they have what's called a sub timing mark which is 60 degrees before top dead center there she be Let me get you guys a better view here what I'm going to do is turn this motor so that the front of the motor faces me and everything I lay out on the table kind of matches that layout now this little stand I have here is pretty cool um, it's from uh, real street down in Sanford Florida I think they're in Sanford um, but yeah they are Jay Meyer down there you've probably seen him on TV with the roadkill stuff and they're famous for that six second Supra that they have, but this little stand you can get from them. It's pretty sweet. Uh, it pretty much lets me work on the thing without having to uh, put it on an engine stand. Now I've already loosened these, but I do recommend loosening these by hand first before you put an impact on them because they are known to break but it is pretty self-explanatory where they go once you take them out so you don't have to be overly worried about keeping the bolts in order but I would still keep the parts themselves laid out the same so that it all goes back together nicely I would just run this thing as is but 20 year old engine you know the valve seals are gonna leak and uh, it's just too high compression. I mean, it's stock compression on this motor is 10 to one. And for a turbo, I mean, I say that, my modern EcoBoost and the DeLorean is 10 to one, but for what I'm trying to do with this motor, uh, we're gonna drop the compression down in it. But yeah, look at that bad boy. It's like brand new inside. Hopefully the pistons look the same. So now here you can see the, uh, there's two timing marks here. Let me get some light. Zero and 60. Now what the manual says to do is rotate it to zero. If you don't see any timing marks, that means we're 180 out. So then it wants you to rotate it back to zero and then back it to 60 before you take the cams and everything else off. All right, so we're gonna go counterclock, I mean kind of clockwise. I can already see the timing dart marks coming. So there's 60 before top dead center. And there's zero. I want to show you guys this. So when you're on top dead center on this motor, you'll see a straight hash. So I'm at zero. And I know I'm at the firing point on the number one because I see those straight hash. Now what? So what I want you to do before you start taking the head off 
is back it to the 60 degree so you see me backing it up so I'm on 60 before top dead center and now I have little round dots on each timing gear and those dots should line up with these raised marks on the engine now if you follow that ridge back you'll see it lines up sometimes they look a little off but <laughs> lines up so this motor is timed now so that we can take it apart we're not going to hurt the cams you know we're not going to break the cams when we loosen them basically <laughs> All right, so I'm just gonna start taking stuff off that I know has gotta come off. We're gonna take the uh, variable valve timing solenoids oil feed line off. Um, common thing lost, there's a filter inside here when you pull this bolt off that obviously has to go back in the motor. I think that's another 10 millimeter. If you are not someone that does this often, and even if you are, it's not like I'm the world's 2J expert. It's the first time I'm building one. Put bolts back where you get them from. Then there's no guesswork when the time comes to reassemble. You know, maybe a part you need's back ordered. You think the motor's gonna go crack, go come apart and go back together quickly, and it doesn't. So there's that little filter right there trying to pop out. It's three degrees outside and my hands are not working properly. It's not supposed to get that cold in Tennessee. It's in there, I just pushed it back in, but I think the solenoid itself has to come out as well. leave that loose for now because it's not happy come on you Water pipe is off. All right, now when you take the uh, the water pump's got a filler pipe that goes up to the head, and when you take it out, there's another pipe at the bottom that has two O-rings, <laughs> and it's fighting me coming out, but. You will have to replace these O-rings when you put it back together. That pipe I was telling you about, this piece here comes out and there's another O-ring on that. There's also an O-ring right there where it attaches to the head. take this timing cover off so we can get that uh, tensioner off. There's three Allen keys. Since I already took the uh, power steering pump off, they're pretty easy to get to. A little corroded. And uh, the one in the middle here is pretty long and I don't have a Allen key socket that's that long. So I'm gonna go ahead and just do the ghetto method and use a wrench on an allen key if I have to. Oh, yep, a little bit of corrosion. Got to get this uh, middle timing cover off so I can get the belt tensioner off. Take the water pump pulley off and then we'll get that crank. We'll start busting loose the cam, cam bolts and the crank bolt. But this motor has uh, definitely never been taken apart since it left the factory, which is awesome. Hopefully it means there's no surprises. There we go. Ghetto method works every time. Still got the factory stickers on it even, it's pretty cool. 
I imagine somebody wrecked their IS-300 with low miles on it. All right, so there's three, looks like they're 12 millimeter bolts to get that tensioner off and four 10 millimeter bolts to get that water pump pulley off. Eureka. Boom. I am feeling under the weather, <coughs> having a hard time breathing, so hopefully it doesn't just sound like a fat kid breathing in this video. But I think most of my videos sound like that. So. All right. So easy a caveman could do it. You're like, even though this motor's low miles, sitting in a junkyard, sounds like a skateboard wheel, so you pretty much know you're gonna have to replace all the accessory stuff. Just bought it, dropped the bolt down on the timing cover, that's good. Now don't go cutting your timing belt or anything crazy because now's a good time to loosen those since they've got something holding them. And uh, the question is, do I have an M14 Allen socket? Mercedes rear diff plugs are 14 millimeter and I have this giant Allen key here. So um, I just used a half inch breaker bar to hold the crank in position um, and then I just broke them both loose so anyhow these are loose now so I can go ahead and take those off and uh, we can start taking the crank or the cams apart get the serpentine belt off and then um, goodbye you have been eliminated Boom. Yeah, this is definitely a low mileage motor, man. This timing belt. I, I scored the lottery on this motor. That's for sure. Now, when you take the VVTI pulley off, this bolt is just a cover for another bolt. And there's an O-ring right here. Washer. It's like an O-ring washer. Um... Like, that'll pop off, but it's just a flat washer with a rubber seal, basically. So then you have to take this bolt out, too, which I think is a 10 millimeter Allen socket, but I'll have to double check. And this little guy here was just a uh, 17 millimeter bolt. Gimme. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Let's go ahead and put this little guy back there for now. Paint this little guy gold. Gold! 10 millimeter bullets. Some 10 millimeter bullets on your pizza. 10 millimeter bullets. Do I have the right one. Well, would you look at that? It's a Christmas miracle. Belt guard off. All right. Cooking with grease. So not all anybody's intelligence here, but cams aren't designed to take a huge load on any one of these bearing caps. 
So you have to break them loose evenly so that the cam comes up evenly. And we have to take the cams off so that we can get the head bolts and take the heads off. Oh, son of a... We got the front caps, which are RTV'd as well, and then you've got all the bearing caps. All right, so it says to take the front bearing cap bolts off first, and it says to do them uniformly. So we're gonna do that. My main goal in this video is just to get to a point where the head is off the motor so we can all see it together. And then once I start putting it back together, I'll bring you guys back for an assembly video. This is gonna be a uh, several video series. So if you're into 2Js, stay tuned. So I'm trying to break them all loose the same amount. And you can hear them kind of give way. You just want to kind of evenly bring them off anytime you're dealing with cams. If you just loosen one bolt all the way, you're on the risk of cracking the cam. Now, there's not much support going on in the front of the motor here. So we're okay, but we're going to take this head off and we're going to tear it down completely. I'm going to clean it, replace the valve seals, clean the valves if they've got any coking on them. And uh, put a new turbo head gasket on and reassemble. Lucy in the sky with diamonds. Caps off. There's a couple of Allen keys here that I did not see. That might be why they're not coming off. All right, uniformly loosen and remove the 12 camshaft bearing cap bolts and several passes in the sequence shown. Remove the number six, remove the six number two camshaft bearing caps and camshaft. Remove the intake and exhaust cams. Okay, so it goes, let me get on the correct side here. So it Okay, those are loose. Jump over here to three and four. Five and six. Seven, eight. Nine, ten. Eleven, twelve. All right. So that's pretty much one, two. Once you do it a couple of times, it's pretty easy to remember the sequence. All the tension's off the cam now. Yep. So what I'm gonna do is take these off one by one, keep the bolts where they go, and I'm gonna set them up on my table in order so that we don't screw it up. And by we, I mean me. Ready to come out, lift it out of its home. Yeah, this cam is in great shape. So we're just gonna lay it on the table.
Uh, there we are. Time for this one to come out now. All right, nothing crazy on this guy either. Well, same thing with the cylinder head. There's a proper sequence here. And it looks like it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. So it's pretty common sense here. Formally loosen and remove 14 cylinder head bolts and several passes in the sequence shown or cylinder head warpage or cracking could result from moving in incorrect order. All right, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. I'm out here on a different day because I froze me knickers off the last time I was out here. Heater going here, I think. I actually put some gloves on this time so I don't freeze my hands. So, these head bolts are technically a special um, tool from Toyota. Um, they're actually M10 down in the center uh, 12 spline, and then they taper up to an M12 12 spline, but I'm using a M12 12 spline and there's enough meat in the bolts to get them out but I'm also not really caring about hurting these bolts because I'm going to ARP head studs after this um, but they do work um, but these things are torqued down pretty good and if you're trying to reuse the stock bolts then I would uh, get yourself the factory tool you can get it on Amazon I'll try to link it in the description of this video it would help if my engine stand didn't move that'd be nice there we go I'm moving each one of these about 90 degrees as I loosen it Here's where having this motor on an actual engine stand would help. These bad boys have definitely never been off. Also, whatever tool you buy has to be a extended length socket because if you try to use a shallow socket or your standard 12 spline sockets the actual head of the socket right there doesn't clear inside the castings on the on the head so something to consider all right well, I've got these all broke from initial torque now I'm just gonna go through and evenly release all of them, kind of just like uh, cam caps. Same concept. There's clearly no torque left on these bad boys, so I'm gonna get a tool and speed up the process. All right, now, like I said here, 
Yep. Now the way these head bolts work is they use a big washer to spread the torque onto the casting. So you have to use a magnet to uh, pull the head bolt out and then you'll want to also pull the uh, washer out before you lift the head off. Use a little magnet tool. Alright, so those are all loose. Now I can just start pulling these bad boys out. That's it, that's what the head bolt looks like. You can see the uh, 12 bolt pattern in there. <clears throat> and then here is the little washer that sits inside the head. So you just want to make sure you get a bolt and a washer and then it's time to pop the old girl off. I tell you what, this is my first 2J, but so far I really enjoy working on this motor. It is super simple. I mean, in a lot of ways it feels like I'm working on a old small block, except there's no push rods or rods or any of that crazy stuff. Non-interference motor, pretty cool. Snap the timing belt, doesn't care. Now one thing I did do, because it's been a couple of days since the first half of this video was shot, is it doesn't take long for your cams and all this other stuff to flash rust. So when you got cams and things that are going back in a motor that you don't want to rust, make sure you coat them with some WD-40 or some kind of lubricant um, just to prevent that from happening um, if you're not going to clean them and reinstall in a quick fashion. Now what's funny is the there's a little casting on the block right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. There's a little casting here and Toyota actually says to use that to break torque on the head. I'm just looking around the motor, making sure there's nothing connecting the head to the block. Okay, well, I had a little moment over there, but I'm back now. Oh yeah, it didn't take much at all. Yeah, she's definitely free. Well, let's see what she looks like inside together, eh? Not too bad, not too bad. Let me get a flashlight here. Looks like there was a little bit of water in this cylinder but that's from me shooting WD-40 in there when it was being stored. I don't think there's any rust marks on the bores. Yeah so you never know how these junkyards are storing these motors. But uh, when I took the spark plug out of the uh, back cylinder here, there was water in the spark plug bore. And that water dropped down on the piston here and just made it rust a little bit. But it wiped right off with a rag, so nothing we're worried about. And that's why I squirted a WD-40 down in each of them. Just to make sure that... that we wouldn't have any rust issues once I took those plugs out, but you can see that this stuff's wiping right off. Those cylinder walls look 
pretty nice. So take a glove off here and just feel oh yeah you can still see cross hatching and uh all of them man this thing's in great shape I'll um I'll probably Use some marble mystery oil or some ATF and bring each one of these pistons up to top. Make sure there's nothing in the board. Yeah, I mean, look at how easy that piston's cleaning up. Look at that. This is going to be a awesome motor. It's definitely the original head gasket. And I don't see any signs of failure. And you can see, man, this is like super thin compared to the turbo gasket it's basically one layer instead of the multi-layer gasket that the turbos come with yeah super thin so I'll keep that as a comparison for later but uh, yeah man, pretty pretty happy with this thing. I think it's gonna clean up nicely. For now, I'm gonna put a little bit of marble mystery in each piston, just kinda let it soak. And then um, that's pretty much as far as we're gonna go with this thing today. I do wanna take the valve, I gotta take the oil pan and the lower cradle off because I'm gonna I'm gonna have to modify this. You see that right there? That's a 2JZ GE um, lower cradle, and they basically, it still has the casting from the factory. They just don't drill it and they don't tap it for the uh, studs. So I've got an AZ Performance fitting on the way for that. But I gotta clean off the Buick block off the engine stand, transfer this one over. Let's see what the head looks like underneath, shall we? Oh man, this thing is going to clean up and be brand new again. This thing's in awesome shape. Check this out. And you can see here exactly what I was talking about. Those spark plug holes tend to fill up with water. So you pull that spark plug out and all that water drains into the head and on top of the piston. Luckily that comes right off. But uh... That's why you want to always try to get the water out of those spark plug holes. <laughs> Just put a little coating on these bad boys. Clean those up later, but I'm going to pull this whole head apart, pull the valves, clean them, replace all the seals. But that will be for the next episode. All right, I got some Marvel Mystery Oil just sitting on each piston, so it'll... Um, just lube up those cylinder bores when I rotate it with the crank and uh, start breaking up the top of those pistons and then I'll be able to clean everything and make it look brand new but super happy with this motor I'm waiting for a tool to show up that I have an old school um, valve release tool um, valve compressor but I went ahead and just bought the snazzy 2J's tool that allowed me to uh, lift those bad boys up, pop those keepers out real easily. So, so for now, thanks for joining me. And uh, hey, hit that like button, subscribe. Next time I bring you back, we're gonna start building this thing. I'm gonna scrub the block, paint it, pull the head apart, and uh, basically go through detailed reassembly. Might be a couple more videos, split them up, but uh, I think that's long enough for today. Eh? We'll see you next time. Time will steal garage, thanks.